Welcome to the Dog and Gus Show, now on Feel It Radio. What's up, Doc? Not much, Gus. What's up with you? Wait, yeah. how are you doing? Oh, thank you for asking. You're welcome. Oh, what a change. <laughs> um, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Uh, we have an absolutely wonderful guest. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, this is going to be really awesome. He brought in a case. Full of flutes, and this is going to be very exciting. I thought it was a poker set. Yeah, and yeah. then he was gonna he was gonna say, "Let's go." You yeah, know? all right, but but it's, not. it's actually even better than that. Yeah. So we have flute Siva, correct? Okay, that's right. Excellent. We call him the flute yes. Siva. Yeah, get it right. Uh, and anybody out there that hasn't uh, listened to some of his music, um, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's like relaxing and soothing. And then when I found out that he did the Top Gun theme, I was pretty stoked. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're much, there's more than just that, but that was a that was a fun one to listen to for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, what got you started in the into the flute? Like, was it a family thing? Um, or? It's uh, it's my dad. Uh, so, just a little bit about myself. So, yep. I was. Uh, I was born in Canada. I was mm-hmm. born in Montreal. And then when I was like six years old, my parents moved back to India. So that's when my dad put me up uh, for flute, you know, because he's into Indian classical music. So he put me up for flute and I've been playing. I was until 16 and at 16, I moved back to Ottawa. Okay. So for that 10 years, you know, I've been practicing Indian classical music. So cool. Yeah. So, and then I came here, I went to... Alton University, I did my engineering mm-hmm. during school, you know, I was playing in a band and and then fast forward, you know, I graduated, started playing music, you know, more than before, you know, I started doing albums, you know, playing with different bands, organizing shows, charity events and all, and then started my YouTube channel and that took off probably six, seven years ago, six years ago, so now I have almost... 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. Wow. So, and uh, so that, so now I'm really forced to make a video, one video per <laughs> month uh, just to well, keep my subscribers. Well, happy. you need to, right? Like, yeah. You don't want to, so you don't want to disappoint 300,000 people. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, like, and what time does that become monetized? Like when do you start um, getting? See, I'm, I'm doing cover songs. So, mm. um, right now, um, I, I don't make a lot of money. I make around, Last month I made two hundred and fifty dollars with three hundred thousand subscribers. Yeah, that's yeah. because most of them are even even the Top Gun um, anthem that I did. I have twenty thousand views, and that generated three dollars and eighty six cents to be specific. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so wow! Well, three bucks. Yeah. Three bucks. Three dollars. It's, it's, it's like Timmy's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. Your, your coffee to work. Yeah. You know? Get you a large coffee and maybe a Timbit. Timbit. Yeah, would it would it be? I, w- I would imagine that the, like the Top Gun, like the person who wrote that song, probably gets more of the. Um, or is it, is it even a thing? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's it now. What happens is when you upload something on YouTube, it it recognizes the the tune and mm-hmm. it says, "Hey, this is from Top Gun," and the monetization becomes sharing. Yeah. So so whatever three dollars, it's maybe like a like a zero point one percent of. His income, so right. crazy, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Even with Spotify, too, you guys get paid nothing for that yeah, stuff, right? It's yeah. kind of insulting, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not musicians, but I'm insulted because you guys work so hard at your craft, and this is what Spotify. You know, here's what you get. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. But you yeah. know, I know. I it guess is. he gets his name out there. He does have the followers. He's got the subscribers, and I'm sure something will come of that, mm-hmm. right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So you said um, when you were in, in, in India, you were, you're classically trained, right? Uh, I did in, Indian classical music. Yeah, yeah, with the flute. With the flute, yeah. So then you come here and you, you start to join some bands and stuff. When was it a thing where you decided, you know what, I need to take the flute outside of Indian classical? Um, right, right when I was uh, when I came back. Okay. So I've been playing with different bands and uh, you know covering songs and all. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't um, even though you know. You know, when you play whatever song, like in, even like country, um, you know, pop and R&B, when you mm-hmm. play it on the flute, you know, it sounds different. It, it sounds, does. sounds yeah. Indian, so, <laughs> so you can't really come out of it. So Yeah, fair enough. It, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. It is very Playing true. Playing no diggity, but it sounds like Bollywood sort of thing. Is that mm-hmm. what you're getting at? Yeah, so I, I know like the Top Gun theme, you know, there are a lot of people on Instagram using that for their reels, and they have like some devotional, some... 
Hindu god, and then the Top Gun theme is playing in the background. Oh no! So. <laughs> wow! So it sounds so devotional for them. So. Right. Okay. Fair enough. The internet, yeah. the internet wins again. Yeah. And <laughs> doesn't it? Well, I know it's just it's interesting how that like you've you've played such a nice classical style of piece of that that music, and then it's put in with like some dummy that's. Anyway, so they, and we can go on for that. I, yeah. m- I might use it for one of our... our uh, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. One yeah. of our reels, yeah. yeah. Um, so, the, obviously, the, was that the first instrument you played, was the flute? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, the first the one. Only one and, that's and, the only one. Yeah, cool. Sorry, that was a random uh, question. but um, And the role of music in your early life. So your dad brought in uh, you know, Indian classical music. Was there another style of music that you kind of were appeal that appeals to you that you were when you were young? Do you remember your formative years with music? Yeah. Um, you know, like Michael Jackson and oh, of course, yeah, all this, <laughs> all those pop pop music. I think yeah. we're the same age because oh, the, the, yeah. essentially Michael Jackson was my hero when I was like six years old, and Thriller came out. You know, yeah. so um, <laughs> it's and true. Then, Sorry, true. yeah, you can <laughs> laugh. No, but no, 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 you can laugh. I'm not. But laughing, I'm sure he's the same way. Like I, the, I'm not laughing. The power of sh- music. I'm not laughing because he's your hero. I'm laughing because you knew when he was you were six. I'm thinking I was twenty. <laughs> 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 that's wh- that's yeah, why I was laughing. Enough, yeah, I wasn't laughing at your uh, choices. Well, I haven't been playing like like English like pop songs when I was a kid you know I've been more listening to it but in the 90s you know I've been listening to like Brian Adams and oh nice yeah those kind of uh, albums yeah in the 90s yeah yep. we got a, we got our Canadian in there a little bit of Brian Adams yeah yeah but in the 90s Brian Adams was huge it's right huge. well he huge, started yeah. he started yeah. late 80s so he was you know he was on his way for sure. Well, that was after, like, Summer of 69 was his first album, I would imagine, right? Like, was that his first album? Well, he had one, Brian Adams, then he had, I can't Probably remember. Probably 90, 95, 96, maybe? 90. 96 wouldn't be, I don't think it was that late for that song, but Please, Summer of 69. W- which uh, album is uh, Please Forgive Me from? Uh, oh, that was later, yeah. yeah that was that was definitely yeah. in the 90s, yeah. Because, yeah. no, because Summer of 69 is an 80s tune. For sure. Yeah. Oh, and really? I think, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think yeah. so. And then... Um, but that album, I think you're talking about, also had the Ro- the Robin Hood song on it. That's what he's yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah. okay. sorry. That was like. Yeah, that's that's definitely '90s. Yeah, because okay. that's when the uh, that's the one with uh, Costner, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely '90s. Yeah. Yep. And with him with Rod Stewart and uh, yeah, Sting. I believe so. Yeah. And you know, Siva. Do you know? I I, I think so. <laughs> and Kevin Costner without the English accent. Oh, thankfully. Yeah. 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 So. So your the, the flute that you use, what is it called? Is I know there's a name for it. Uh, yeah, so they call it, um, like you know, you c- it's it's just generally bamboo flute, but in Indian term they call it bansuri. Mm-hmm. Bansuri. That's the there there are two different t- kinds of flutes from okay. India. There is one a North Indian classical flute which has six holes, which is called the bansuri, and then there is a South Indian call. Vein, it's called vein, V-E-N-U, so okay. which has eight holes. And the fingering techniques, they're all totally different. Right. But I do carry both styles. Okay. And uh, the Bollywood kind of music, mm-hmm. they, you know, it's easier with the North Indian kind of flute. Okay. So so I collect both. And then I do have like, uh, like you know, Chinese flutes. And right. I collect flutes, Irish, and I have everything. And the yeah, whole collection, yeah. And the Japanese flutes as well? And Japanese flutes yeah. as well. I got one here. It's uh, Shinobu. Is that uh, or uh, Shinobu or Shinobu? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of looked it up. It's not like I know this stuff. I actually looked it up. So figured you would know. <sighs> well, I do like Japanese music, and your music, like I was listening to your stuff last night. It's just, like, it's just so it's awesome. relaxing. Yeah, it's just fantastic. I you know, and obviously because we were interviewing you, I, I was more intrigued to listen to some of your stuff, and and it's just really like something you would put on. In the background, mm-hmm. and yeah. maybe you're cooking dinner, or you're you're relaxing, or you know. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And 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 the way the reason I have so many of them is imagine a uh, uh, 48 uh, key piano. Mm-hmm. So you know a white key and a black key. Yep. So I basically have flutes for each and every key. For each key. That's yeah. On the so um, you know, and for different octaves, right? So okay. the smaller the size, the higher the octave. Okay. Yeah. That, that was something I was going to ask too. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I mean, I wish you guys could see the case. It is pretty cool. Well, we'll take a photo yeah, and we'll a video if early if later on. Yeah. He's going to play something for us too at some point, sure. I think. Yeah. Yes, he yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. That'd be you great. Don't, yeah. No, you don't drag this case in here and not play something for well, us. Well, I right? didn't suspect he would. He was trying to, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like uh, somebody playing billiards and they pull out their pool cue <laughs> like that, you know, and it's like, you're not going to play pool. Um, <laughs> 
have you in Ottawa, say, or anywhere, like, what would you say, like, your favorite venue that you've played so far? I've played at uh, almost all of them. Like, I, I used to play a lot at the Carlton U, uh, the Southern Hall Theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I played at Algonquin. Um, I played at Orlean Shankman. And I, I played at NAC a couple of times as well. That would be cool. Yeah. I would think that would be a very cool venue to play. Yeah, yep. it is. Shankman's pretty cool. I saw a, oh, a sure. really cool blues act there too once. I yeah. think it's good, good acoustics in there. I'm thinking. Algonquin is pretty good. Yeah, I've been there as well. That's a pretty, it's a it's a nice um, venue. It's like, it's not too big. It's not too big. Yeah. yeah, so it's nice. It's intimate and especially for like to play the, it's just like, I feel like the flute is more of an intimate kind of like, okay, it's you, it's me, it's the flute. This is awesome. I, yeah, I, I think so too. I yeah. think so too. It's, it's one of those um, those sounds that are, you're very, you're very, like, you're, it's engaging. Like, so you're watching the person play. I mean, it's a very, you know, I t- traditionally I watch anybody play their instrument. But, you know, if, the, if you're by yourself playing, um, and even in, a, in an orchestra, I tend to follow that. I don't know why my eyes sort of go, I find it such an interesting way of holding an instrument, and then I get intrigued by how it oh, sounds okay. also, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it sounds weird, but because I'm just there's like there's two different ways. Like right? there's in front and there's a side yeah, flute, the, right? Yeah, the front one is more like a, you know the recorder type. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. The side one, you know, the fingering technique. If you compare, if you play the Western flute, the metal flute, mm-hmm. they are almost uh, identical. The the way the fingerings are. Okay. The only thing is, I don't have the keys. So yes, for me, um, half notes are half open. So, like, you know, on a metal flute, you know, you, there is a key that yeah. you press for a half note. Mm-hmm. But here, you have to adjust everything with your fingers. So, it's a, I, it's, I would say it's tougher. It is tougher. Yeah, it's and tougher, then with yeah. the um, with the with the wooden flute, right, it, it changes, uh, like, uh, pitch based on your, uh, um, like, the room temperature. Oh, that I've and, and also your really? bo- body temperature, right? Yeah. So, if, uh, if it's winter, you know, I, I go into a studio and my hands are cold you know the pitch might be a little bit off so i have okay. to adjust the flute i have to hold it in a different way just to and then blow it softer or hotter just to change the pitch interesting See, i was gonna that's when you mentioned winter i'm thinking okay so you're coming in with all these these beautiful wooden flutes now it's 40 below outside when you come in do you like okay guys i need at least 10 or 15 minutes for the flutes yeah, yeah, to just to settle down yeah, yeah. To, to to warm up a little bit right exactly so, exactly yeah. and i don't really if it's winter, I, I usually don't. I have a different set of flutes. So these, are, these ones are plastic. Okay. So they produce almost the same um, kind of sound. Mm-hmm. So I use them if I'm going in the winter. Okay. okay. And uh, if it's really outdoors, like, sorry, um, like a wedding indoor with an intimate ceremony, I, I bring my uh, wooden flutes. In okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. And, and uh, some of them are very... Like you know, very fragile and also very expensive. Okay. So I have like different ranges of flutes from very like expensive in the sense it's not like super expensive, like four hundred dollars uh, from you know a piece. Yeah. So it's expensive. It's expensive, and then some of them are like hundred dollars range. Okay. So and then I keep uh, you know be, make be, sure that I don't yeah. break the expensive ones. Couple yes. Of, yeah. Be careful with the expensive. Couple ones. thousand bucks worth of flutes in, yeah, the, yeah. in the studio yeah. here. Yeah. Um, the uh, so do you have like a favorite flute? Is there one that you like to go to the most? Mm, not actually. Like it based on what pitch I'm playing. Yeah. Okay. So there's no like favorite. Yeah. So this is a this is a D, this is a D flute, and uh, what happens is if you close the first two, that gives you the root note of the song. Okay. Uh, so see. So that's if I close the first two. Yeah. So you know. So these are the notes, and then if you if so, this is basically this is a G scale. So if I close the two finger, that produces a G note. Yeah. Cool. So so that's how you play, and then when you uh, if if you're you you can for North Indian for North Indian flute, this becomes three closing the three fingers. Uh, you know, become the root note. So, yeah. so rather than rather than G, it becomes an A flute uh, or an F flute. So 
So this is the way, North Indian way of doing it. Ah, okay. So they, Cause, sorry, because you said one had more holes, right? Yeah. Like your one flew just, what, six and one was eight, you said? Yeah, one was eight and uh, one was uh, one the was smaller, six. The yeah. smaller one's eight yeah. and yeah. that bigger and, and, one's And you six. can still use the eight whole flute and you can play as if you're playing a North Indian flute. Okay. I didn't realize we're just, like... You're here for a lesson, did you know? Oh, I'm I'm learning and I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. So so there is this, uh, like on a... On a on a like a Western metal flute, right? You know, mm-hmm. the notes are very straight and like a staccato kind of uh, feel. But with the Indian flute, like say, uh, say uh, you can you can imitate uh, the way you sing. See, <coughs> see, let's say I go from this note to note, <coughs> and then I can do. <coughs> so I can do a slide. Yeah, that's things. that's awesome. Oh yeah, it's such an interesting. Uh, you, you people look at that and they think it's probably easy to play the flute, but you <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you okay. realize it's very not. It's not. It's not. It's <laughs> you know? No, you. Got, I mean, you got to control like your your breath, your like your breathing and all that's that right. stuff. You know, you got to be under control of that. So if you can well, get out of breath halfway through, you're you're not doing very well. Exactly, and plus the the, the actual holding like the sound yeah. with your fingers as well as and speed that you close the hole. Exactly, and then the. Like if you, for example, so that's an F note, and then if you blow harder, it changes. Yeah. And if you blow softer, so it's the same fingering, but the way you blow, right, it changes the pitch. So you have to you have to be very conscious of how uh, strong you're blowing. Right, and I was watching. It's also like how close you are to the flute as well, because if you're Blowing further away from the flute, with it, the sound is going to change as well, right? Oh no, you have to put your yeah. It's, lip has to be on the L- lip has okay. to be on it. All right, yeah. fair enough. Wow, yeah. Can you play Aqualung? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. that was yeah. that was wrong. Oh come on, that was no, I could, I could. He could. He yeah, he could. Of course do. he could. He I could just like, I wanted to be a he, smart he ass. He could I do apologize. it. You almost did it too. You were almost smart, but you were an ass. I was a smart ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's okay. Steve is okay. So. Um, so if you were to, uh, like, if you were to, like, think about music that you enjoy to listen to, like, do you go and listen to different flutists to play, uh, on your, like, when you play music at home, or do you, you know, and you're in the car or something like that, is that something you are intrigued with, or do you like to go to the old pop stuff, and maybe new pop, or something? Yeah, I'm actually pretty open. Um, I'm actually doing a cover of Post Malone. Oh, really? yeah. Interesting. Alone, uh, very hip hop, and it, it doesn't have too much melody in it. But I had tough time playing it. Uh, the rock star. Oh yeah, yeah. Post Malone. Okay. Why? Why? Why are you having a tough time playing it? It's. It doesn't have a. It doesn't have a, a melody. Okay. So it's more R and B, like a rap. It has a t- like a small bit of melody, mm-hmm. but it's very hard to reproduce on. A, okay. Like okay. the way you sing. Yes. Uh. So uh, anyway, I I'm, I'm releasing in a couple of weeks. You gotta you gotta you gotta be the judge. And, yeah, well, you know, yeah. I'm sure we're gonna enjoy. Oh, it maybe he can play a little taste of it here yeah, after maybe. later on in the show. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. so, we'll see. I'll see if I can intrigue him. Well, maybe, so. I think we will. Yeah. Now, a dream collaboration. Who, if you had like anybody that couldn't say no to you, and you say, "I want to play a song with you," do you have anybody in mind? Um. Uh, like everywhere, like anywhere, anybody, 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 any, any genre, genre, whatever you want. I want to do a song with you, and they can't say no to you. Oh, they can't say no. No, to they you. can't say sorry, <laughs> sorry, buddy. I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I'm sorry. No, they cannot say no. No, I don't know. I, I have like artists from India, like the Oscar and mm-hmm. nominees, and people in India that I would want to work with. Cool. Yeah, but I don't have like a specific thing, you know. Oh yeah, maybe what about Post Malone? He, hey, I heard oh. th- I heard you do that tune for me with me, guy. Yeah. What do you think? I don't. That's yeah. I would I would I would ask Post Malone. Yeah, yeah. He's a pretty cool guy. I like when you yeah, release it. Maybe he'll. Yeah. Maybe see, he'll I'm I'm, I'm just hoping that I tag him. You know, he would. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he might. You know what? He's, he's like that. Yeah. He's yeah. he's doing a he's doing country stuff right now. So I'm I'm 
I'm sure he'd be quite intrigued by your version of his tune. For I'm, sure. I'm, I think he would be. Well, did you see him dancing to Shania Twain? Yeah, there? yeah. Like he loves he's, country music. He's just a and guy. he does Nirvana and he does crazy stuff. Yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah. he's a guy that just loves music. So I'm sure like he'd Post be quite uh, yeah. pretty pretty down to earth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe he'll use it in one of his like videos or something, or yeah. just like do at it or something. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. coming, man. You put it yeah. out there, it's gonna work. Yeah. So uh, my plan is, you know, just to make more of uh, songs like that. Mm-hmm. You know, just to, you know, reach uh, a wider wider audience. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, that's cool, and then brings you in, them in to see the rest of your stuff too, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah, but you're also you're still also writing new material, like you know your own material too, right? I or are you just doing covers um, right now? I did one album like two years ago, mm-hmm. and that's on Spotify. But mm-hmm. I'm, I'm planning to do more. Yeah, and I di- I released a Christmas album. Yes, you did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so which uh, I can't wait to play that at Christmas. By the way, I'm oh, gonna fire you. it. Yeah, I I listened to it last night. It's awesome. My, my neighbors <laughs> must think I'm nuts. You, you put like, your tree I'm, up. Did you put uh, your tree up? No, I didn't. I don't have a tree. <laughs> but I'm blasting this on my stereo, and it's like, my na- I wonder if they is he playing Christmas music? That's but funny. it was so good. I really enjoyed it a lot. That's great. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was last year. You know, I've been wanting to do it for a long time. Yeah. And Raf- Raphael is uh, Raphael played a couple of tracks. Yes, I, I thought I heard a cello on a couple of them. That's awesome. And now a word from our sponsor. We are currently recording Dog and Gus in the podcast booth at Staples Studio, Ottawa, on 403 Bank Street, where they have everything to help your business work, learn, and grow. They are currently offering a clean and safe place to work with desks, offices, and drop-in memberships. More than a co-working space, Studio is a community to help you work, learn, and grow. For more information on pricing, please visit studio.staples.ca or contact the community manager at studio.ottawa at staples.ca. Hey, Doug, want some hot sauce for your tacos? You brought your own hot sauce? Damn right. Have you tried Gringo's Sizzling Nirvana? It'll change your life. Nice. Are there other types of sauces? Absolutely. There's different hot sauces for different palates, incredible barbecue sauces, red pepper jam, and salsa. All of them use fresh ingredients, and it can be delivered to your door. Hey, how do we get some? Go to www.gringosblazingsauces.com and order some. Gringos Blazing Sauces. Bring the fire to your food. All right. Siva's going to play a little rock star for us. Oh, yeah. So, uh, like I said, you know, the melody is, you know, it keeps repeating, right? Mm Mm-hmm. That's so awesome. Yeah. So, you, know, you know what I love about it is that you're doing the like his what he's saying. Like you're, you're yeah. See, see that's that's, that's amazing. A, see, uh, it's just to get the melody right. So I got the lyrics and and I, I just try to sing it first so mm-hmm. that I I I get the exact syllables. Yeah. And then and then I can recreate that melody. Yeah. So cool. So and, and but the thing is, when you when you're recording, what I did was I I I recorded once and then I cut and pasted six times because. It's the same, right? It's the same melody, right? right okay. So yeah. yeah, nice. Do you record your own stuff? Like, I, like, I do. Like, I, I have uh, just a min- small studio in my basement. Yeah, nice. everybody's getting a studio. We need a studio in your basement. Do you have a basement? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But uh, we're not. You're not invited. Um, <laughs> oh, ouch! <laughs> just kidding, bro. Ouch. Um, so, but like, do you like when you talk about because you've worked with Dean Watson also, right? Yes, I yeah. did. Yeah. So, so did you go just do some? I I, I went to his studio. He he was back in uh, on on Bank Street, right on Monk Street. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've uh, first met him. I uh, oh I met Raphael first. Uh, I wanted that was for my album. I needed some cello, so he referred Dean because that's how that's where he goes to record, and yeah. that's how I met Dean. And uh, so, I, and then I did a Senorita, um, uh, you know, the pop song Senorita. Uh, Justin Timberlake? Uh, no, the. Uh, oh, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, not White Cloth. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Do 
for the song? Yes. Sean, Sean Mendes? Uh, Sean Mendes. I yeah. can't believe I forgot his name. <gasps> Sorry, Sean. Canadian. Yep. Canadian. Yep. And uh, that's I recorded at Dunes, actually. Cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. So now, when you needed a cellist, you, you just, like, you know, you, you'd heard of Raphael before, or you just, like... Oh, that's a long story, actually. So, um, there's this... Um, we have time. Raphael went, uh, he went to Ottawa U for his music, I think, or maybe master's degree, I don't know. Um, I think so. So, I was at this event, a scholarship event for music students. Okay. And Rafael was one of the performers. Okay. And he won the performer. He won the award. And I was just in the audience and I was like, oh my God, who's this guy? Mm -hmm. And then after the event, I went and exchanged numbers. I'm like, hey, um, I just want to work with you sometime. And that's how I met him. Nice. So, and it's been like probably more than 10 years, you know, we've been. That's cool. That's like. Seems like a very like we when we chatted with him, he's very intelligent as you are too. But but the thing that he knew, like he seems so approachable. He just like seems like yeah, such yeah. a nice guy. Yes, you know. Yes, and and the way he plays, I, I learned so much. Like I sat next to him once uh, at a concert, and the way he, he plays, and then the the breathing was so hard. You know, he was going like, you know, and I was like, oh my god, this guy <laughs> is is like. You know, it's it's the next level, right? And then I asked him, okay, how, why do you play like that? And he's like, he always thinks that that's going to be his last show in his life. That's cool. Yeah. So, so yeah, like w- when I was listening to your stuff, and we've already talked to Raphael, I was thinking, like, because you're trying to go outside what a flute is known for doing, and Raphael is doing the same thing with the cello, right? He's just like, yeah, it's like trying to change everything. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking that's maybe that's why you're like, oh my god, this guy. Because we listen to him, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And your stuff, and I'm like, wow. Like, it just changes the whole um, concept of what a flute can do and what a cello can do, right? Exactly. Yeah, and that's amazing. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. And and to, that's so interesting that you tell the way. Because like, you, you probably play with passion also, but the passion that he has for the cello and the, the way he spoke about mm-hmm. it. And then, you, like you just said, he plays like it's the last time he's going to play. Exactly. And it's like he leaves it all out there, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, as you should, right? Like, like I think it's great, and it's, it's good that we, we've got performers that are like, you know what, man, this is I'm going to give it my all, and that's what you know people are attracted to. It's like, wow, this guy's wow yeah. off the hook. Well, to win the music award, yep. that he's talking about is very challenging. Yeah, like that's that's like a, a there's top musicians in that group, right? That are up for exactly. Those, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It was a scholarship thing for higher education, and he won it. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, because we he's he's our new best friend, Raphael. He's in tour right now. Oh, yeah. He is, yeah. But the, the funny thing was, is and you're you're obviously very well spoken and ch- and talented about your music. But he th- said things that, that dog and I were just sitting here, like honestly, getting a, we were getting a lesson, like yep. like honestly, it felt like as you are too, and it's amazing. We're very open to this, and we're so grateful that you brought everything. But it's so funny that we sat here and we literally said maybe ten things in the in the podcast because he was so engaging and so well spoken that we just let him go. You know, oh, and okay. he he was saying Which things. Is awesome. Yeah, and you're the same way. You're the same way. Yep. Okay. We like it. Well, He's we don't have to talk as much. People like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Everybody thought that was the best part because we were quiet <laughs> the whole time. Um, <laughs> you'll get you'll get to know me. Uh, <laughs> um, so describe your creative process. Like, so say you come home from work. Is the first thing you're attracted to? Obviously, is go to your. Do you go to your flute when you get home? Is that one of your first things, or no? Or is uh, it comes to you? Actually, like it's been very mechanical w- with the YouTube thing. So, like, I be, see, I, I released a Christmas album just to get out, you know, different uh, setup audience, right? So now I'm thinking, okay, what should I be doing? So I'm I'm, I'm actually looking at this uh, French uh, uh, song. Uh, you know, I want to make cover. You know, I'm, I'm listening to different music, so I get my flute into different mm-hmm. genre and different communities and then I want to attract a uh, different part of the you know the world world right yes. so I'm doing that and and uh, at the same time I don't want to you know have my subscriber base that I want to you know post a video every month so so I go and choose what I'm going to be doing and then I have some music friends you know including Raphael you know if I you know, they, I, I provide them with the instructions and then I get this template done uh, uh, for the background music. Okay. And that takes like a, a week or two. And with the p- 
Post Malone back backing track was done by Victor from uh, Hungary. You know, he's from Budapest. Oh, cool. So he did all the backing track. Okay. And so once I have that, I it takes me a couple of days to record everything and then mix and master. Yeah. And then the video. So I had to plan that ahead for every month. So so, so it's like more mechanical now. But I um, don't have time to just sit down and say, okay, what should I be doing in the future? So it's it's like probably month to month by now. Yeah. So with your YouTube subscribers, are you like trying to stay in, like are you going to be like more experimental with your music? Or yeah, yeah. You, I'm, are I'm, I'm going to. You know, the thing is, um, w- what happens with, with YouTube is, um, even when I post Top Gun, if you go to the the uh, st- the stats mm-hmm. and how many people watched it and all out of the twenty thousand, ninety one ninety one percentage are from South Asia. So the YouTube, what happens is even though you post something a song from here, mm-hmm. it um, promotes it uh, in the other side of the world, right? Where I have more subscribers. Nice. So, but I actually want to change that. You know, I want people from here watching mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm just, so the more uh, people watch from here, you know, the, you know, the stats, the stats would change. Okay. Is that why you kind of chose Post Malone? Maybe, yeah, maybe Post trying Malone. to get a little bit more. Exactly. Of and, North and, America. And, like yeah. everybody knows who he is, yeah, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and uh, we shot the video. The video came out really well. So okay. Right. So it's going to be. When are you really, releasing it? Um, probably. Probably end of this week or maybe next week. Okay, cool. So it'll be out before this podcast comes out. Oh, yeah. yeah. So nice. when is this coming out? Uh, probably three weeks, I think. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, okay. we got a couple ahead of uh, oh, that nice. we have to drop. Okay. Before. Okay, by then I'll have my Post Malone. Nice. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely promote it for you. All right. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you don't need any help from us. but we're No, really I know. Need I need yeah. all the help. We're going to help yeah. you anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, you're going to help us, actually. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just kidding. So... Just a, like, so if you were, like, your favorite part, obviously you're saying it's mechanical right now, but what's your favorite part of, like, creating music? Is it just sort of, like, seeing the reaction of people like us watching you play, or is it more, is it more for yourself? Is it, how would you, how would you describe um, it? It's more for my, like, I, I started doing it, like, you know, when I had, like, 35 subscribers. I started doing it without even thinking it's going to grow, right? Yeah. So I really love recording it. I really love um, you know, sometimes, sometimes I just, I don't even record. I just go in. I wanted to record, but I start playing. I just get into the mood. I just start, I would just play for hours. It, it's really like when you, when you listen to the flute, uh, a raw flute, and when you have all the effects and you have your headsets and you play, and that's a different feel. Oh, yeah. So I would just play hours like that. So I just, uh, if you ask me the recording process is, is yeah, it's cool, man. It's it's fun because you're playing the flute, and you don't think of a flute being, you know, with the background, with like like synth music in the background, right? Or even there's a couple of songs that you have that there's um, somebody rapping, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> well, that's interesting, but it was it's good and it fits. And I was just like, because I'm I'm James is the rap guy. I'm not really a rap guy, but I was like, wow, I really like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And I listen to that too. It's pretty cool. And I love the Christmas album. I think it's awesome. I know you're you're very Christmassy. You look like Santa. no, I'm not. You're like purple. I'm not purple a bearded big, no, Santa. I'm not a big Christmas. Honestly, I'm not a big Christmas guy. He isn't actually, but it's. I'm gonna get him onto that. Don't but worry. Uh, that album, I listened to it last. Like I said last night, it was awesome. I'm gonna play it tonight just for S and G's. Um, if you could change one thing about the music industry, what would you do? Um, it's a I'll pay more money for amateur artists. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much the standard answer right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that's because you guys get nothing really, honestly, from Spotify. It's almost a joke. Yeah. Like the, the, you're the talent, on, and they get the the majority of whatever comes from it, right? Yeah. And if you're unless you're Drake or somebody like, you know, you're not going to get paid enough, yeah. you know, just from that. You got to sell albums at like a live event. I don't, event I don't or think an amateur artist can just be a full time musician these no. days. Anyway, so. No, that's true. Well, none. You know, I know the amazing people we've talked to are. Like just we, Raph. You've got a graph is. Raph. Well, he's got a job too, doesn't he? I don't know. I, who, I who didn't. Raphael. Raphael. Oh, no, he's full time. Full time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I thought yeah. so, but he's he, he's a, like he's yeah. constantly doing something like he, yeah, anyways. Yeah. 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 He he does a lot of things, different things, right? So you got to you got to just yeah. you know expand your genre. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's too bad because that's like 
That's what music's built on as amateur artists. Exactly. And they were all amateurs at one point, yep. you know, before they did what they did and do what they do. Yeah. Now, the Coconut Lagoon, tell us, tell us about that. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you have, have you guys been there? Coconut? I love the Coconut Lagoon. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. But I didn't know that it was, re- re- it it reopened. was reopened. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he's been a big supporter. So I, I've been organizing a fundraising event since 2010. Okay. Uh, for Canadian, my mom had breast cancer. Okay. And uh, I started doing Canadian Cancer Society fundraisers for nice. the past 10 years. And and Coconut Lagoon, you know, he always, you know, he used to be the prime sponsor. Okay. And and then after the pandemic, you know, like, um, you know, um, you know, the, the restaurant got burnt down, right? Yep. So he called me and said, hey, I opened up and um, I want you to shoot a video here and i'm like hey i'm 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 shooting post malone you know, maybe <laughs> is that where it is yeah, though, yeah it oh was. amazing <laughs> nice yeah, to keep yeah. going sorry it's actually like you know the the high ceiling and the chandelier and you know it just worked out so well we had a nice awesome uh, nice shoot there yeah it's so really great uh, yeah. i love the coconut lagoon the food there is amazing yeah. i've never been oh bro you'll, you'll oh really love I've, never I've never been, been. i've even heard b- even before no the, i've um, heard really good things about oh, it but i'm dude. not adventurous as others with food so oh dude. but i do know of we'll it because people i know lots of my friends are like they love the place yeah so and i just saw that i'm like and the owner is really nice you'll you'll see him there yeah. you know yeah. like that's okay. the cool thing about it and it was so tragic it was almost to be honest it was kind of a during the pandemic obviously their business was taking a big hit but the fact that it burnt down was, I hate to say it, but a blessing in a, in a way because yeah. the place wasn't like, you know, it was very uh, eclectic to, exactly. say the, to say the yeah, least, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas, but the food was just like, you know, you didn't care what it looked like inside. You just wanted to eat that food. It was, right. it was just amazing. Well, yeah, like I said. I'd We're looking for sponsors, by the way, Coconut <laughs> Lagoon. So, no, just kidding. <laughs> I, can, I can get him on board. Nice. Yeah, there nice. we go. Hey, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> you said we were going to use them, and here we are. I know, I know. He's going to, well, I'm not trying to use them. I just think uh, that you said you were going to. We help do. each other. Yeah. And yeah. Now, one of, your, one of your songs that I was listening to that I really, really, really liked was, uh, I'm going to say it right, Raja Raja Cholan. Oh, wow. Is, really? is that, I, that was like, I love this song. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, the song has, uh, it's, a, it's an Indian, South Indian song. Okay. And it has a very nice uh, guitar. Mm-hmm. And the nice drums to it. Yeah. So it's pretty like a eighties uh, western westernized eighties. Yep. That's song. probably why I liked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it had because like the guitar and I'm like, this is great. And then yeah. it, then you come in with the the flute comes in. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm just loving this. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I, I really think, did. I think you pronounced that well. Last oh, time. good. Yeah, yeah good for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you really? Oh, <laughs> say it again. Uh, so Raja Raja Chulan. Yeah. Is that good? <laughs> so, Raja Raja uh, Chulan. Yeah. So he's. Um, That's great. Um, so I think Chola, Chola is a, it's like, it used to, it was a king, one of the kings ruled South India like 2000, I think 2000 years ago. Okay. Three, maybe 2000 or 3000, I'm not sure. So, um, so the, the song, you know, Raja Raja Chola, you know, it's, it's not about the king. He, the, the lyrics is like, Hey, I am the king of, uh, uh, the, the universe that you live in. Okay. So that, that's uh, he's he's meaning. Okay, I'm the Chola king that that the universe that you nice. live in. So, so. But it's just it was just like yeah, yeah. It yeah. was so it was so good. It's pretty. Re- it's really relaxing music, yep. man. Like I was saying that earlier, and I can't emphasize it enough. It sort of just chills me right out. Yep. Yeah. You know? That was shot at uh, the video was shot at uh, Ward Ward fourteen. Have you been Ward fourteen no. on on uh, Preston Street? No. Ward fourteen? Yeah, Ward fourteen is a been. bar. Oh, one fourteen. No, Ward Ward. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's right on uh, Preston and uh, Somerset. Like near two six eight. There is a there is a fire fireplace, and then right next to it. Yeah, yeah, okay. I haven't been there, but I know where that yeah, is. That's yeah, that's where we shot the video. Oh, nice. Cool. Okay. Want to go check it out? Yeah. I have to go to the Coconut Lagoon now that we've talked Bro, about. Bro, I need to go. We'll there. go together. Okay, it's, I'll tell you Great. exactly what to oh, eat. Actually. So you can so come too. So the thing is, the thing is, they have. Uh, it's not a buffet anymore. There's oh, really? They don't have buffet. Oh, that was. And that now was cool. you have to book an appointment to get. Oh, you have to reservation. It's like it's like a high fi Indian. Oh uh, no! <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll still love the food there. So. Yeah. 
The food I is gotta, great. I, I, I was. We'll make a rezzo. We'll make a rezzo. You let, can let's, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Awesome. I'll introduce to the owner. And, uh, great. Do I have to put on a nice pair of pants? You know, you no. Don't. Oh. I, I mean, you, I mean, we'll look good, but you got to you got to keep up, bro. <laughs> I'll try. I mean, obviously, look at this. This guy's got style, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. He's saucy, he's saucy over there. Yeah. I like this, I like his his glasses. I want a pair of glasses like that. <laughs> the old school. I like your glasses as well. <laughs> yeah. We're we're bromancing here. Yeah, a little bit. I'm just going to leave now. Yeah. Um. Sorry, I was going to say. Uh, so you obviously your social media and your presence out. Like, do you find that you're getting? Do you ever get any weird messages? <laughs> Like, like, can you play me a song? Like, uh, actually, like, you know what? On on my YouTube, um, I'm sure there's, there's really, haters too. Sorry, there is really, like actually, you know, it's pretty. So, um, on average, um, every YouTube, you know, the average number of dislikes would be, I think, two uh, percent. If you have more than two percent uh, haters. That means the video is video. Somebody is trashing you and stuff. So all my videos, I have ninety eight percent positive and two percent negative, right? So go. I always look at the stats. So and then with regards to the comments, um, I can just remember like two or three comments, worst comments, and that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't really remember. And some people would say, "Hey, you're nothing without the background music. You can't play anything without background music." I'm like, "Hey, what are you talking about?" Everybody needs background music. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Like, what, are, what are you trying to make? You're not trying to make solo Some, music yeah, by yourself. Exactly. That's not the purpose. Yeah, you're nothing without background music. I'm like, yes. You're correct. Yeah. You're, you're, you're right. right. You're, you're right. correct. I hate you, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> People are so stupid. I know. Like, why would you even, oh, man, it drives me nuts. What I think, like, you read, you see those uh those clips with, you know, Jimmy Kimmel reading mean tweets and stuff, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's people that don't have a clue. Oh, it's hilarious. Like, you know, though. so somebody's criticizing you and your background music on, you know, play. I bet you they don't even play an instrument. They're just haters that just don't want to, you know, say something nice. It's just like, I have to say something negative because it makes you me feel think good. Like, that guy, that guy or girl has a terrible job yeah, or something. And, you know, or like they hate hates, themselves. Uh, you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. Why would you, pro- pro- like, project something like that where. You're actually. I hope we get big enough that we get negative comments. Yes, because I could you know. just. I can't wait to trash them back. I, th- I can't I wait to read them. You're probably better. Than, like I wouldn't. You know, you just leave it alone. Like, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. would you? I, I, I sometimes. Um, um, sometimes you know, I I just block them. Like if the message is really rude, yeah, I just block them. Yeah, that's and, good. And then sometimes you know there are like, if you look at the Bollywood industry, right? There are like known, well-known flute players. And some people would comment me saying, hey, you're not even close to this guy. I'm like, yeah, of course. You know, he's a professional. I'm not as close. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, talking about. Yeah. You're right. But it's nice, that, close. it's nice that you're, ta- you're talking about me in the same sentence. So thank you. Exactly. So yeah. at least you're comparing me with him. So Helps your cool. algorithm. Exactly. Like they yeah. say the name and then all of a sudden people <laughs> like get exactly. shown to it. Yeah, yeah, anyways, whatever. I don't know how it works. No, me neither. <laughs> yeah. So those guys, those kind of messages on YouTube, but Instagram... I have a I have a filter set up now, so I get weird messages sometimes. So, so I get it gets blocked, and then I go and check now. So, but n- not too personal. Oh, that's on, good. On, that's yeah, good. A so lot of bots too. I eh? like yeah. like uh, pu- promote it here. You yeah, know? exactly. It's like, go away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I get that message. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you yeah, do. We, we get that too. Oh yeah, but like not probably the same amount. No, no, but I, no, same. They're all they just show up as soon as you post something. Yeah. They, it, it shows up because they're all bots. Right? But, uh, well, that's cool. That, I mean, that, you know, 98% positive and the 2% that's negative is like regular life. Anyways, exactly. Right? Exactly. So. Every video, you know, some, some people post like, I can't believe uh, people can dislike this video, right? And then I'm like, hey, no, like I expect 2% of people to dislike. So Yeah. yeah you're not going to please everybody, even if it is like awesome. Because it is. It is awesome. Yeah. And he, they're right. Like, how do you hate this? this yeah, like seriously. a flute. Like, it's like, you're an idiot. Yeah. Go away. Yeah. So you're telling people to go away a lot. So listen to that. Me? Yeah. Go away. Yeah. I, th- I don't like negative stuff. No, like, go either. beat it. Yeah. You want to go uh, be negative, be going to be negative in your in your own time. Yeah. So have you heard of the organization Playing for Change? Playing for Change. Yeah. They're on YouTube. And so it's basically, it started out um, with uh, Robbie Robertson. From okay. the band. Okay. And it's basically, he took the song The Weight. Okay. And he basically, um, this guy that started, I can't remember his name, but he, pe- he cherry picks people from different uh, countries like like India and China and Japan. And they play different parts of the song. Okay. And then they kind of do a video, right? So like, 
We have Flute Siva playing in Ottawa, you know, and then we've got Robbie Robertson playing in Los, Los Angeles or whatever. And they play the whole song. And it's just like these, all these different instruments from different countries and different cultures. And they put it all together and it's amazing. Really? Okay. I yeah. Think I gotta take what, do they, and what do they promote it? Like, what are they, uh, what's, what's a charity for? It's playing for change. Yeah. That's change. what it's called. And they have a band and the band tours. I know, but they, but what is the, what, like the change? What are they looking to change? Just like, just, you know, music to change the people, like people, like just to say, you know, music is, is love and ah, love is music okay. and stuff. It's just, you know, to be positive about things. And get and rid just of the negativity. Yeah, yeah, just get rid of the negativity and it's a music is, is worldwide. Like really? there's not a culture that doesn't have music in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And it's just to embrace like something, some new music, you know, like somebody from China playing a, an instrument you've never seen before or somebody from Argentina or whatever. It's just amazing, amazing musicianship. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it would be, I'm going to try and get your name in there. That'd be cool. Yeah, it's, it's just, and they sure. take, they take good standards. But it, like, is, it is funny that you say that because music is such a, brings everybody together. It's universal, right? It's, it is a country, it's a worldwide, there's music in, in India that, you know, you may not have heard, but yeah. now that you've listened to some of Siva's stuff, yeah, it's amazing. And then you go and you listen to Canadiana music, you listen to American music, you listen to Russian music. Yeah. You know, like it's it's amazing what's out there, and it's just and this in this Russia. organization, it's like just the way that they meld the songs together, like like that was the one song, but um, they had a whole bunch of like they do like do do R and B, they do like Slash is on one of them from Guns and Roses, right? Oh, right? So it's like it's amazing. He'd like your stuff. Slash yeah. would like your stuff. So and it's just I thought it was really cool. Anyway, that is cool. No, no, and I think that Siva is a good fit for that. Yeah, I th- I honestly think so. Maybe it'll work yeah. out. Yeah. You put it out there, so I did. You know, uh, you were asking me a question: What you want? Uh, the, you know, the, what, what you want? What kind of change you want to see? Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So remember, here, right in Ottawa, right, the radio stations. Yep. Like, let's say you make an album, like for my friends and my Christmas album, right? Mm-hmm. Just to reach these, like eighty nine point nine or one hundred six point nine, you can't. You can't reach them. No. If you're an amateur artist. No, no. So there should be a channel for amateur artists to reach, you know, like the thing is, uh, Instagram, they have Instagram page, they have Facebook, they have website. You know, I messaged probably almost 20 stations. Yeah. Nobody responded. Yeah. Right. So, I it's, mean, like, what's the yeah. point of having, like, you know, local, local radio, radio You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. It's very... CKCU, it's very maybe. Oh, CKCU, they, they are local, right? Yeah. Uh, like, I've been Carleton. in touch with them. Yeah. 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 But I'm talking about the... No, no, you're, you're talking about the chain radio, radio stations. And you know what, Doc? You're going to have to play one of his songs on one of your radio shows. I'll do it. Yeah, I know you will. I'll do it. He's on Feel It Radio, which is in the UK. So oh, he'll really? Be, okay. Yeah, I yeah. do two shows, one on Sundays and one on Mondays. I'll slip your song in. All right. Yeah, you, he, well, you put one in for Mecca of Stang. I did. Yeah. I did, but it, it was a kind of a disco flavor, so I kind of threw that in there. But I'll throw one of your songs in. Absolutely. Um, so I'm just remembering Kevin from Seven Snakes. We had him in, and they're oh, a hard... Yeah, I saw the video. Yeah, and he said the same thing. Because he's been going through like Rebel, yeah, radio like they they're harder rock, and that's what Rebel plays, and we're Ottawa's real rock station, yeah. And they are doing the same thing to they him. Ghost, yeah, they don't they ghost do any, yeah. yeah, they yeah. don't and do any. And their stuff, stuff is amazing, and I'm I agree with you 100 percent that there should be some radio station that takes it that has the balls Actually, to say, you know what, uh, yeah, I'm gonna play that. Uh, you're gonna play our just get back to me, say hey, yeah. sorry, I can't play, but just to, just don't ghost. Yeah, exactly. Just be respectful and they say, should have, yeah, they should have someone that's yeah. feed, like at least looking at those. Hey, dog. Oh, oh actually. By the way, my, my hamster started jogging there, Dog and Gus Radio. Yeah, there we go. We're in. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but the thing is, with, with the Post Malone song that you're doing, maybe. The O Canada um, on, like not last year, year before, um, CTV National News. Right. They took a small clip of it. Yeah. And, you know, when before they went on a break and they were like, oh, next stop. And then they played a little bit of nice. me and Raphael, which was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. that is cool. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. News, yeah. yeah it's, I, is it so, I like it. Did like they it recognize it? you guys? Did they say your name on the? No, no, it's oh. just, just our faces popped up and then the music for oh, a couple good. of seconds. But that was more than enough. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, I tried to get my, uh, one of my other teachers to play it at the school for the students because I thought it was cool. I'm sure that you may, yeah. you, it may still happen, right? Yeah. Because it is old Canada. I mean, yep. well, you well, because every day they you don't need to hear the words. One. You can just hear no. the song. They hear a different one every day. They they like uh, walk off the earth. Yeah, they do one when they're sitting there and with ketchup containers. Oh, really? And the kids love it. <laughs> but they also do another one that's like. But that's the kind of thing, right? It's Canadiana. 
Yeah. You guys are representing Canada. You're from Ottawa. It's like, why shouldn't it be somewhere where that they could play that in a school? Dog and Gus Radio. Dog and Gus Radio. We'll do pirate radio. We Yarr. can. I wonder how you, we, I'm going to look into that. How do we start our own radio station? I'm telling you. What I, do you think, Siva? Do you know? Uh, I think you've got to get a license first. Yep. you got to go through SOCAN <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. SOCAN is going to be very much Oh, involved. man. Yeah. Well, that's okay. For pirate radio. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll just do it. I so think okay. I will listen to you guys. Yes. Oh, thanks, Eva. Well, yeah. I actually, I actually thought I talked to uh, Gus about doing a, a show, with all of the artists that we've we've met and playing their stuff, and then just throwing it up on like on uh, what's the one I use there, Mixcloud. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and just like you know, we had C, uh, Flute Siva in today, and here's a, one of his amazing songs, and then you know maybe follow it up a little Seven Snake because you know that'll work together. Who cares? No, exactly. You're right. Like I think it's great. I'm gonna start doing a. Uh, like a basically a, a like a Spotify playlist of our all the people that yeah. we've had on. I think that'd be pretty cool. Well, we have got some really talented people here. It's just, I think it's something we should be doing. Yeah. Do you guys listen to Howard Stern? No. Howard Stern. I see. I watch some of his videos and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I do on uh, Sirius. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's tamed down a lot in his oh, yeah. in his older years. In his well, he prime. used to be quite r- like oh he was rude. Yeah, yeah his shows were quite, uh, but it's still funny. Yeah, so funny though. But yeah. he's but he's very knowledgeable too, though, right? Like yeah. he knows his stuff when he's talking to, um, like say Lars from Metallica. He knows what he's talking about when he's talking to Lars. He's not just like, so you play drums, right? Like he's very well, knowledgeable at his stuff. But that's stuff. why he makes two hundred and fifty million, million a year. <laughs> he's <laughs> right? he, he, oh, dude, he makes how ton much? Of money. Uh, the serious uh, contract. It was. It was a lot. It was a lot, right? I think he's ma- he makes like a hundred million a year. Yeah. I think, and then he makes whatever he makes on the side. But and he made books, and he's got this. But that's like radio DJ from like Pittsburgh yep. that kind of just decided that. Well, he's a shock like, jock at the beginning, right? Yeah, like, and yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, really? yeah, big time. He yeah. was uh, originally you could listen to him like when I lived in Toronto, you could listen to him on uh, in the mornings on uh, Q one hundred and seven. Like they would have Q one hundred and seven was the is still there, but uh, basically you'd hear him for the two hours that he had his show on. And then when Sirius came and they just brought a dump truck and said, here's your own channel and yep. it's constantly on, right? Like and here's your money. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, man. I think you had, you guys have so much potential. I know I really like your voice together back and forth. Thanks, yeah, man. Thanks. So Thank you. I think you hit it off. Yep. yep. And we're going to, you're going to, you got to starting a radio station now. So, oh yeah, you got to. Yep. Man, I got too much to do. Yep. I'm excited about it though. You have I, kids. This is, yeah, you I have kids coming. I know it's crazy. It's cool though. Yeah, yeah, it's all craziness. Yeah. No, um, let's ask, okay? Because we know the answer, and I know. Well, I actually, don't know the no, answer. No, we don't know the answer. You, you know, so so the traditional question we have here at Dog and Gus podcast is eighties or nineties music. For me, nineties. Uh, nineties, yeah. yeah I, I'm more uh, into like R and B, hip hop, and pop music than real like traditional like. Classics and stuff. Okay, so I think I would go nineties. Nineties R and B is solid. It's that's very like I do. That's where it came up. Really. Yeah, it's not it's not a bad choice. Who's your man. favorite? Who's your favorite R and B artist? I have, I have a lot of. I listen to everybody actually. I don't have nineties though. Nineties guy. So the one out there, he's not, he's going to keep asking. Uh, I got to think about it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. We'll get back to you in our next podcast with yeah. Siva, <laughs> and he'll let you know. See you in a year, Siva. Uh, the the. Uh, <laughs> Well, for me, R and B back like Montel Jordan was the one that I would listen to a lot, and uh, One Twelve. I don't know. Nobody cares, eh? No, they do. Okay, your mom does. <laughs> <laughs> His mom is one of our biggest fans. Biggest fans. She commented on our YouTube page the other day. Yeah, really. Yeah, oh, she's yeah, yeah, like yeah. Since she's we've, awesome. She's since amazing. we've started this this whole podcast and stuff, she's been. She's my f- I think she was probably fan, our bro. first person to come on board, and she's had comments and made comments and stuff, and it's awesome. She's nice. wonderful. She's a great woman. You, she loves your stuff too, by the way. She, oh, I you. sent her. I said we're interviewing because she's uh, she works for the NAC, so she's definitely oh, really? okay. Or you know, she promotes and and does fundraising, and and she goes to the, to the NAC quite often. And I sent her your name, and she's always like, "Oh, I love this stuff." Yeah, you know. Oh, and thank you. Yeah, Dana Banana, that's her name. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, I mean, I, I'm I'm so happy that you came, and appreciate Likewise, you being yeah. here. And and Dog and I are so grateful that you. Uh, you you joined us and maybe you can just give us a quick uh, last play of, of something. 
Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah I'll put you on the spot. Yeah, you don't have to. But and nice. yeah, thanks for you know, you know, starting us on a new journey with the radio station. Now appreciate that. So random. Yeah. I'll just play a, an Indian tune. Please, please, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Are, are you recording now? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Go. Oh, really? Okay. Take your time. How cool is that? It's like so cool. I, I can't even explain. I how watch. Cool his, that I'm is. watching his fingers because it, I, you know you, you watch. Obviously, they watch the whole the whole playing. But when you see him like controlling mm-hmm. the pace of the sound and and it's just amazing, dude. Yeah. See, and he's, so cool. That's him, and I'm just listening. Oh. Yeah, because that's I'm just like okay. I have, I'm, I like the technicality part yeah. of. It. I've, obviously, I'm listening also, but but yeah, I like to watch you play because yeah. I'm so intrigued by that kind of stuff. It's. So awesome. Right? We're so lucky, man. We're yeah, lucky uh, to have these I amazing guests. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Eva, so much for your time today. Thank eh? you so much. I appreciate for the invite. Yep. Yeah. And like I said, I'm going to s- sneak one of your songs into the Feel It Radio. I hope they're not listening. But ah, I'm doing so it anyway, dudes. All right. It's what your you show, dude. What are you, you going to do? Fire, show. Are you yeah, do? Yeah. fire me? No. A, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they can't. Well, no, they can't. No, they can't. They can't. Well, they can. And we're going to start talking Gus Radio. That's right. Steve will be like one of our radio hosts. Yeah. There we go. He doesn't know it yet. No, uh, he's he hired. Got, him. He's hired. Apparently, he does now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, you'll be hired with actually no money. Yeah, it's a it's and a volunteer job. But I'm, yeah. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Just call us Spotify. All right. Yeah. Oh God. Oh no, no that's no. wrong. No. Sorry, get rid of that. All right. Sorry, I'll edit that out. No, I won't. Thanks again, Siva. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay. So Thanks, guys. Have a great week. All right. Until next time. <laughs>